Today on the show, I'm excited to be chatting with Martina Booth. Martina is a certified life coach, relationship visionary, and jealousy expert. She has always been an outside the box thinker and has been fascinated with romantic relationships basically her whole life. She believes that relationships that are built on rules are not sustainable and that putting the relationship concept over the person is one of the main reasons for relationship problems. After years of different relationship struggles, including insecurities and jealousy, she found someone with whom she could build a relationship based on real connection. Now she supports others on their journey to letting go of jealousy and building that connection instead. Martina, so glad to have you here on the show today. So glad to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, definitely. So so for the audience's context, Martina and I, I want to say we connected about like a month or so ago, and I kind of came across your entire platform centered around, you know, letting go of jealousy. And this is a topic and idea that I really would love to explore here on the podcast, given how there's a lot of different opinions when it comes to jealousy. Is there a healthy amount of jealousy? Is there no room for jealousy when it comes to relationships? And so I I definitely wanted to like reach out to you and learn more about your own perspective, how you help others navigate this kind of weird topic when it comes to jealousy. And so today, today definitely be speaking with Martina to learn more about, you know, how does jealousy affect a relationship? What place does jealousy have in a relationship if it should have a place at all? And so to kind of kick things off, Martina, I I would love to kind of just get your own perspective on things. You know, there's some that think there's a healthy dose of jealousy and that can benefit a relationship. But, you know, what are your own thoughts when it comes to jealousy and how it can affect relationships? Yeah, so um, I actually don't think that there is a jealousy is ever healthy in a relationship to be honest, um, because I don't know what would healthy jealousy look like, right? I mean, mm-hmm. I, don't, I can't really think of anything. To me, jealousy, it never feels good, not to the, the jealous one, for sure. <laughs> yeah. And it, it often leads to fights and to disconnection and just to frustration on both sides. Um, so to me, it's, it's a sign that there's something that is not right and that, is, that there's no not un- unconditional love and trust in that relationship. And it's, in my experience, also a sign that should be taken seriously because jealousy can really destroy a relationship. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, even if you have someone who's just like having mild jealousy and is not really acting out on it, it just doesn't feel good. So that's what I think. And um, I know that some people say that it's a sign of love and that somebody's important to you, but I actually disagree um, because. I don't think that love and jealousy are connected at all. To me, love is an unconditional feeling um, that is only about the other person and how I see them. And Mm -hmm. jealousy, in the contrary, is about me and my fears. It's about making my partner responsible for my feelings, which they never are. And it, it doesn't mean that when I'm jealous, doesn't mean that somebody's important to me. It means that I have strong fears that are connected with potentially losing them. Um, or losing the relationship that I think go beyond being just sad of having of the, of, of not seeing that person anymore. I think there gets there's stuff that gets triggered when someone is mm-hmm. really jealous. And I think that if you really love and trust someone and you have a connection and you trust in that connection, then you'll probably not be scared of losing them because it just doesn't cross your mind. I don't know if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. No, that 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 definitely makes sense. So. If I'm understanding jealousy in your eyes is more so something that is indicative of something personally traumatic or personally yeah. that you're going like a personal insecurity rather than something about another individual where when you look at it, it's more about the connection. That's what ties you together. The right. jealousy is not looking at that. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's like when I talk to people about jealousy, I find that there's usually something it is about insecurities for sure. Um, but I want to stress that it's not only that, because I feel like when I look around at what other relationship coaches, therapists, whatever, people who work with other people on, je- uh, on the relationships, when they talk about jealousy, it's often about, okay, it's, it's just that you're insecure. And actually only yesterday I heard uh, like a psychologist who's like a relationship coach and everything. 
um, say that that basically, if you're jealous, you're just telling your partner that you're the that you're that you have a problem with your self esteem. And I don't think mm -hmm. that's correct at all because when I talk to people about jealousy, yes, there is usually something that they are not sure about themselves, like they're not sure that they're good enough or that they can compete. But often, I also find that they have some past re um, experiences within relationships. Maybe they have been cheated on, and then the it really like ended in a bad way. And for them, it's like this horrible event that needs to be um, prevented. Um, mm -hmm. And it's like their brain basically goes to recognizing any, anything that resembles that horrible situation. And it's just like, okay, uh, this looks a little bit similar to what we've experienced before. And we have to make sure that never happens again. And then, um, and you know, it doesn't even have to be their own experience. It can even, it can be a friend's experience or their parents when they, when, when they were little and they saw their parents going through some, problems like maybe they split up because of someone else that can also um trigger that intense jealousy and then one thing that is some that nobody takes into account which is funny to me actually is the society that we live in and the way that we look at relationships the way we as a society see relationships and think they should be we have to be jealous i mean there is no way we could not be jealous if we think that infidelity is the worst thing that can happen and there's absolutely no proof of the absence of infidelity. How can I not be jealous, right? Mm -hmm. So, right. yeah. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of it, like you were mentioning, is just due to past events kind of resurfacing other experiences we've seen that may have not personally affected us. And that in turn, we start kind of second guessing, oh, is this going to potentially happen to me? And yes, yeah, it's, it, it's odd. You know, so kind of on that note, looking at past events leading to the triggers that lead to jealous, impulsive reactions, you know, having experienced in your own personal life, jealous partners and insecurity yourself, mm -hmm. how did you then begin to rewire your ideas around these insecurities and, you know, this jealousy that you were experiencing and your partners may have been experiencing as well? Yeah. So, okay. I have to make sure um, to be so that 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 it is that is uh, clear that so I have never ha really felt jealous. Like jealousy is not something I've really experienced in my own life. For me, I want to make sure that I had insecurities, but to me that's a difference because I've always been, and that was not even related to any kind of event where someone else may have taken my partner away. This insecurity of not being good enough, of not being pretty enough, of like my partner potentially getting sick of me. I've had that a lot mm -hmm. in most of almost all my life, and. The jealousy, the experience with jealousy that I've had was more on the other side where I had partners, one, one in particular that was so extremely jealous that it was not possible to have a normal relationship with him. And yeah, so for, for my own insecurities, I really thought about that when I was like, have I even gotten rid of like, I, I'm not sure that they're, that they're gone, you know, I might, mm -hmm. I might still have them. I think I still have them a little bit, but I, I thought of my relationship and what is different now? Like for me, why do I not have in any way insecurities in my relationship now? And it's really because I started to trust in the connection that I have with my husband. So it's really that I have, I might still have insecurities about myself, but I am so sure of our connection and our relationship. And it's, it's, it's funny because to me, it really started with um, being real like i was so sure mm. of a lot of things about me that were not that would make me unlovable and that would somebody would not want to be with me if they knew about that and so i started putting everything on the table and that was when we got engaged and i thought i cannot marry him if if he doesn't know all those things because i would be basically be insecure and uns like unsure about this relationship forever so i started telling him all the things and he just was okay with all of them mm -hmm. and to me, that is a really important part of connection. When I say connection, I really mean this feeling of like, okay, I am being 100% real here. And I think a lot of people don't do that to the very core to like be 100% real and say, this is exactly who I am. And, and I know that my partner knows exactly who I am and that they love me anyway. Because that, if you feel that, that it gives you such a sense of security in that connection and that relationship mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. It's like, it doesn't even, that's what I said before. It doesn't even cross my mind that he would, that he would ever leave me because it's just, I trust in that connection so much. Mm, yeah. yeah so 
Yeah. No, that's such a great example. I think to distinguish, like you were mentioning the point between insecurity Mm -hmm. versus jealousy, where all the insecurity stemmed internally from you on a personal basis, but then the, or rather the idea of the connection, like you were mentioning, when you put everything there out onto the table, knowing that you're still potentially maybe going to feel insecure after that. But then the connection is fortified even stronger. And then the idea of your partner never leaving you or just that connection being so strong is just, it it completely puts away the idea or the thought of jealousy, maybe even ever coming into the picture. So I really love that example. Yeah. And to tie that back to jealousy, um, I also wanted to say that the reason why I think that so many people never, ever get to the point where they have true connection is that even if you are 100% real about everything, what happens once you have a wrong thought? What happens if there's a new person in your life that you like just a little bit too much? And you know that you cannot tell your partner that. That's when the disconnection already starts for me. Mm. And I remember very clearly when I when I was with my husband, not like we started, we were dating like for three months or so. And and we talked about things like that. And then he said that he would never want me to not do something just because he wouldn't like it. And that to me was so like groundbreaking. This sentence was like, wow, even if I did something that he wouldn't like, he would still love me. And I think that is the key to everything because that really gives you such a strong foundation. Yeah. And I, and I think it also goes to this idea that I have this own personal belief also, like you have to kind of look at it in a relationship sense. You have to look at both the unit, you and your partner together, but also you as two separate yes. individuals in, in that Absolutely. sense. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And because you asked me about um, the, jealous jealousy in my life and um my past partners i just wanted to to like conclude that is that i i did not really um there was nothing i what i found is that there's nothing i can do about them being jealous and this is something i also notice with my clients and with people who talk to me from the other side the ones who have a jealous partner that i can sadly not really help them with it too much because as much as we think that we are jealous because of what the other person does. And um, because we even say they make us jealous, right? Mm -hmm, Right. We actually have very little control over their jealousy. Right. Meaning that what I, what I see in people and what I also tried myself is that the partner of the jealous person tries hard to convince them. They tell them that they love Mm -hmm. them. They reassure them every day. They even restrict their behaviors. They start, doing things less doing do, doing things less or not doing things anymore they stop seeing people because they want their partners to be okay and they don't want them to suffer right but it doesn't right. it doesn't work because if your mindset is oh this person's probably going to cheat on me or i have to like absolutely prevent this from happening this is the worst thing that could ever happen the, the funny thing that happens in the brain is that your brain is going to look for confirmation of what it thinks, mm-hmm. what it believes. And mm-hmm. if you believe that, you will find the signs. And that goes back to what I said before. Uh, there is no absolute proof of the absence of infidelity. You cannot prove that unless you lock your partner up in a, in a room somewhere. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, then you will have 100% control. That No, maybe they're still cheating on their phone. If you take the phone away also something, somehow mm-hmm. that would probably be the, op- the, the only way to prove it. But if you have a normal life, there's no way to prove that, it, that they're not doing anything. So it's perfect for a jealous brain, can always find something. And usually the, the partners of those people, they will try everything and then eventually they will get frustrated and they will at some point they will make a decision how many restrictions they are going to allow and tolerate on their own lives. And for me personally, I mean, I, I left eventually Mm -hmm. because I, because freedom is important to me and I'm not willing to, to basically be controlled by someone, someone's fears. Mm, Yeah. 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 No, that, that, that's such a great point of how, there needs to be that that liberty, that freedom to still be your own individual self while being in this unionship, this partnership with your with your significant other that 
jealousy doesn't allow you to do at the end of the day you still have to live your own life i think at least in my opinion you have you have your own separate lives at the end of the day yeah. and so if you feel as if you're restricting your own life the relationship is supposed to be there to help improve and better your own life experience is supposed to enhance it not not take away from it kind of like where you're getting at with jealousy it yes i love it that diminishes yeah. it that's exactly what i think that your relationship should add to your life it should make your life better mm -hmm. and yeah. not worse yeah exactly and, and so you know with clients that you do work with I, i'm curious to learn about like when they have a jealous partner or they themselves feel as if they have jealous tendencies and they want to they feel as if it's kind of like you met, like we were just discussing, like taking away from their own experience or their partner's experience. What are some ways that you found that can help kind of really get down to the root cause of that jealousy? Because like you mentioned, sometimes jealousy is really rooted in something else than the actual connection. Yeah. There's some deeper, deeper insecurity, deeper fear. Yeah. How do you help people get to that root cause and help, help them get rid of jealousy at the end of the day? Yeah, um, because you also asked, what do I tell people who have jealous partners? I want to just address that quickly. Um, to those people, I can only tell them to have compassion for their partners and try and see it from their points of view and understand where it comes from, that it's not about them and they're not doing anything wrong. And also be sure that they have boundaries, that they know where their limits are, of what they're going to accept in, in terms of restrictions on their own lives. So that's why I also don't usually work with people who have jealous partners because mm -hmm. it's really not, you can learn to deal with it, but I think eventually you'll have to make a decision if, if you want to keep going on that way. If it gets extreme, you know, I, I usually mm -hmm. get extreme mm -hmm. cases. Um, the people who are mildly jealous, they don't usually recognize that it's a problem in their life. So I get usually people who are like, um, if I need, if I don't, my husband said, if I don't fix my jealousy problem, that he's going to divorce me. So that's usually the type of person mm -hmm. that comes to me. <laughs> and with those people, um, what I do is I really like at first, I really try to find out where it comes from. So I ask them a lot of questions about um, when the jealous situation happens, like what exactly they think. And then also we go to the place of like, okay, let's say that is actually what's happening. So why would that be a problem? That's a question that nobody ever asks. It's like, why mm. would it even be so terrible? That question gives you so much insight. When you ask that, you get all the reasons that are beyond just it's not like, I don't know, uh, I'm insecure and I might not be better, not, not be good enough to like in, in comparison to this other person. Mm -hmm. And um, to me, it's really the most important thing is to really just become aware of what's actually happening. And so that's a big part of my work with the people. But if you're asking me of like, what could I tell someone now who's not working with a coach who is like doing this alone? I would really also say the first step is to take responsibility for your thoughts and feelings. Like if you're jealous, you realize that it is not your partner's fault. Even if they're che cheating, let's say go to the extreme. They are mm -hmm. cheating and they're doing all mm -hmm. the terrible things that you imagine. It is still your thoughts and your feelings that make this a problem for you. And I know this may sound harsh for some people, but it, it's really like that. So go back to yourself and say, okay, what, why is this bothering me? Like, why is the situation bothering me? What are all the horrible things that I'm imagining? What am I really scared of happening here? What would it mean if all my fears and assumptions were true? Those are questions mm. I would say. Ask yourself that and really see what comes out. Um, and make sure that before you blow up on your partner and you start yelling at them and you start like going crazy, like stalking them or I don't know, taking their phone and checking things, really breathe. <laughs> Let yourself experience the jealousy a little bit and like really accept it to be there. And then really go into your own brain and find the answers to those questions and ask yourself. Then once you know what, what is really the problem, like what are the thoughts that you're having? What are the fears that you're having? Ask, like look into your own life or into mm -hmm. you. What did you experience? See if there's anything that this relates to. Where could this come from? You know, can you find a connection somewhere? And also very important start questioning your beliefs about relationships. And this is a big one for all of us because we've all grown up with more or less the same beliefs. I think they mm -hmm. vary in, in, in intensity or like in, in extremity, but they are all in the same direction of like, this is what a relationship is supposed to look like. And 
ask yourself, what did I learn about relationships from my parents? Did I grow up in a religious household? What were my friends saying when I was young? What kinds of media was I consuming? What did I learn from that, right? Um, is it that I learned that my, that my partner is supposed to make me happy and fulfill all my needs and never look at another person because that's what most of us grew up with, right? Right, right. And we have to question all of those beliefs if we want to have a fulfilling relationship that lasts. And I'm saying lasts about like people, if you get married at like the age of 30 or so, you have 50 years of relationship in front of us, mm -hmm. in front of you. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I love that kind of trifecta you, you hit on in terms of like looking at the actual feelings. What does that feeling look like? Not just, oh, I'm going to feel jealous, but what does that jealousy entail? Is there like fear associated? Is there anxiety? Is yes, there exactly. other feelings? And then looking to, I think the second point there was, taking that second step, kind of taking it further. What does it, I think this is where a lot of people, even myself, when I, when I think about like times where I've even been jealous, it's like concretely, what does that look like? If the worst case scenario pans yeah. out, what would that actually have in terms of an effect on me as an individual? Yeah. A lot of us get stuck in, and I know I've been prone to this and a lot of people probably similarly where you get stuck in the clouds, you're not really grounding yourself into what reality might look like. And so, yeah. That's a really good point. And then the third, like you mentioned, there was the idea of looking at what types of relationship ideologies you grew up with, with your family experience, your friends, the media consumed. So that trifecta there, I really love that. Yeah. Yeah, it's really, it has a huge effect. I think actually that's one of the biggest, the biggest influence factors of influence, like on, on, on someone being jealous. Yeah. And, um, yeah, what do you do when you know all that, right? I mean, that's the next mm -hmm. step. That's the next step when I work with my clients. And when you know why you're jealous, then it really, it's really becoming good at recognizing those patterns. Like first deciding, mm -hmm. okay, I don't, this is what I think. And it's in my way right now. And you decide whether or not you still want to keep, keep thinking this. Sometimes maybe you want to keep thinking this and then you got to see if you can stay in that relationship. But if you're willing to not think that anymore, for the sake of being with that person that you love in a happy, fulfilling relationship, then um, you must become good at recognizing the thought patterns. Like when they happen, like whenever you get triggered, you gotta like get good at like catching yourself and yeah. And, and make sure that every time you catch yourself thinking that you, you also, and then this is the process. This is, this is practice, you know, it doesn't just yeah, happen. Like yeah. that. You have to practice that. Eventually you'll realize in the situation, that's like the ideal in the situation oh, I'm about to think that, but I didn't want to do that anymore, right? That's like the ideal, mm -hmm. but that's really at the end. So it's at, at first, it's like recognizing when you triggered and like, okay, I was thinking that, why was I thinking that? I wasn't actually, I decided I didn't want that anymore. So it's really that and practicing it and e redirecting your brain every time mm -hmm. and retraining yourself. It's like going to the gym when yeah. you've never done any workout, right? Your muscles don't want it and it hurts and it's uncomfortable, but you know why you're doing it. And you know also that it's better for you in the end. Right. So you keep going. Maybe you give yourself a break, but you also keep going and training that muscle so that eventually it will automatically be strong enough and you won't have to think about it. I mean, it's like kind of mix, mixture mm -hmm. between brain and muscle, <laughs> but I think you know what I mean, that eventually yep. there's going to be, a, there's literally going to be a new thought connection in your brain. You can actually see that on brain scans when you change your mind. Um, I think uh, Joe Dispenza did a nice video. Like there was a TED talk or something where he did, he, he showed a video where you can really see how the thought connection is formed. Mm -hmm. I really love that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And then there will be a new thought connection and you won't get triggered anymore, but that's really at the end, right? That's, we're not right. talking about something right. that will happen in two weeks at all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Just a matter of practice. And I think at the end of the day, it's more so eliminating a lot of this analysis paralysis that comes with jealous types of triggering events. So I think, yeah, this trifecta, I really love this trifecta here that you kind of mentioned in terms of how to get to the root analysis of kind of what is triggering these jealous thoughts or these just general thoughts yeah. at large and then helping you kind of lay the fa lay the foundation the groundwork to make better decisions and have a clear vision of you know yeah. what would i do in this situation so i absolutely love it awesome yeah and very important also the really taking responsibility for your thoughts and feelings and that is not only for jealousy that is just my recommendation mm -hmm. for life for everyone 
don't walk around blaming everything on others. Oh, this person hurt me. This person did this to me. No, it's they did something and you're it, it's it's affecting you because you're you're taking it on. Right. So. Right. Right. I, I've been there. I've seen oh, we, all it have. <laughs> we, all, we all have. We all have. I want to make sure that we know oh. anyone listening or viewing to this, like if you feel as if it's, it's only been you trust us, like Martina and I are both going to say like, this happens to everyone. So yes, but once you make that switch, happens. it still happens to me. Like I wouldn't, I'm not free of that. It happens that I feel, but that I feel like, Oh, this is unfair or something. But I, I know that it probably isn't like the way I think, see it. And here now there's another practical tip that I can give you because this is what I do when, when I catch myself in a triggering situation, I write down my thoughts. Like I sit down and I write down what, I, what am I thinking? And this is something that I don't judge in the moment and is important because otherwise it will come out differently. You just sit down, mm -hmm. you write down everything that you think about a situation. And then later you go through the list of thoughts and you look at them and you will be surprised what you find. Every time I think, oh my God, I can't believe I'm really thinking that. Or you will recognize the thoughts that keep coming back and you're like, oh, not that one again, damn it. And um, yeah. And another thing that is also super important for triggering situations of any kind, if they're jealous, jealousy related or not, is to, um, to really learn how to feel a feeling, experience a feeling in your body. That's also one thing that I work that I do with my, my clients and that we've all never learned. Like, what do mm. I do when I get overwhelmed with my horrible feelings? Mm -hmm. um, then I usually yell at someone or maybe I, 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 I drink some alcohol to like numb it or um, or I'll just push it down and we'll walk around my whole, the whole day with a stomach ache. But the, the real the solution to, to inst intense feelings is really so simple that it sounds stupid, but it's like to feel them. And it's like, take, your, take, your, take a moment, go into a quiet room and just experience your body. Look at what the feeling does. Heart rate goes up. I don't know. Fingers feeling weird stomach there, there are so many body reactions that that are like basically that's the feeling a vibration in your body and if you just allow yourself to experience that it won't even it's not even as bad as you think it it will be and also mm -hmm. most of the time it will pass quickly not always but most of the time it will pass quickly that's the, the best thing about it it's like oh it wasn't that bad and also it's gone now <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, that's such a great, great practical tip to, I think, yeah, like you mentioned, this applies to any type of feeling, it doesn't have to deal with jealousy yeah. or in, you know, like insecurity, any type of, you know, extreme kind of concentrated feeling that you, you may want to push away to the side. Yeah, it takes a long time for some folks, like even myself, when you want to just push it to the side. And, but when in reality, you can, like you mentioned, do yourself a lot yeah. of great benefit, just feel it in the moment, take yourself to the side. Yeah. And it sometimes passes and you, it's like the, it's like the, go to the gym example, you build that kind of practice up more and more and more. And then you just, it becomes yeah. almost second nature. Yeah. And I want to make sure that everyone who listens to this doesn't get discouraged if it doesn't work out <laughs> the first time, because this is a really, it's not a difficult exercise, but it's something that is so different from everything we've ever learned. And there's such a stigma with negative, connected with negative emotions mm -hmm. for, for so many of us. And I see this every day with people that I work with that, they, they, maybe they're not at all able to, to, to connect to their emotions or, or they're like really scared of it. There are so many different reactions to it, but I have rarely met someone who was like, oh yeah, I, I just feel my feelings. They're just there. It's fine. So if you try this and it doesn't work the first time, please don't get discouraged and just do it again <laughs> because it's, it's really the key to a happy life to me, this, this skill, especially for me, someone who's like, I deal a lot with a lot of anxiety because I'm also a highly sensitive person. And I, I have a lot of anxiety from no noises. I don't know a lot of different things that other people don't seem to be bothered by, but for me it causes anxiety and learning the skill of like being able to feel my feelings has made my life so much better. Yeah. It's such a great skill. And I wish it yeah. was something that was <laughs> taught in, you know, education system. Yes. But <laughs> It's it's one of the top. I agree with you. It's one of the top, if not the top skill, I think there is for life. Absolutely. And so, yeah. And so, Martina, you know, I want to be respectful of your time <laughs> here. But, you know, at the end of each and every single one of my episodes, I ask guests these three keys to relationship questions, which is three questions to gauge your own insight or philosophy around relationships. And these are not quick fire questions. These mm -hmm. 
I want, I'd love to hear you expand and these apply to any and all relationships. So friends, family members, mm-hmm. your significant other business colleagues, what have you. And so the first question I have is what's your number one relationship red flag? That's a good one. And I love that you said it also expands to friends and other relationships because I've noticed that one thing that makes me run away from a relationship is when I notice that someone is not able to question themselves, to reflect on themselves and that they take everything personally and get defensive immediately. Mm-hmm. You know, when I notice that it, I have to be careful and I'm not saying about like insulting people with horrible things and like, I just about normal conversations where I have to be careful what I say, because I know that they will get triggered and they will like react in a very extreme way. That makes me feel kind of unsafe in the presence of a person. And it, I feel like they're like a ticking bomb or something that could explode at any moment. So that for me, that's like a no-go. Like if I notice this qual- this in someone and in, in, even in a friend, I'm out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it, it it's kind of similar to this idea of, yeah, like not being able to freely experience and express yourself. You always feel as if you're holding some aspect back in terms of your form of expression. Yes, exactly. Yeah, because I have to, because I, I know that basically I have to make sure that I don't, you know, say something wrong. So it's like always, yeah, censoring myself. Mm-hmm trying to figure out what the and but the problem is you never know what the other person what's going to trigger them like it's it's like mm-hmm. you you, mm-hmm. you kind of know but you also don't and that's frustrating <laughs> yeah no definitely mm-hmm. and, and so the second question i have is a little bit of a converse to that first one what's mm-hmm. the most underrated relationship quality then in your in your opinion yeah so uh, i'm thinking of one that is more related to to romantic relationships, I think. And this is um, this deep non-sexual connection that you can have with your long-term partner. I feel like it's the most amazing thing. And I say non-sexual because I feel nowadays it's all about having a lot of sex and um, being all the time passionate and, uh, and like, you know, over all over each other. And people think that something is wrong in their relationship if they're not having passionate sex all the time. and I, um, sorry, (laughs) got distracted because somebody knocked on my door and I'm like, right now, great. Um, (laughs) yeah. And I think, um, that strong passion and deep connection don't really go together. And to me, knowing and trusting someone so deeply, like it's, it's just the most amazing thing that I, that I can imagine and that I really want. And if I have to choose between the passion and the And this like connection, I'm going to choose the connection always. I'm not saying you can't have great sex and like, you know, experience Mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. part, but I just feel like people are very, very focused on that nowadays. And Mm -hmm, it's like, mm -hmm. if you're in a long-term relationship and you're not super like intimate all the time, like you're not intimate in a way of like, you know, being nice. I don't know how to say it, but you know, it's not sexual all the time. It's not passionate Mm -hmm. all the time. Then I Mm -hmm. feel like people think that their relationship is not good or that it's not worth staying together. And that's so sad to me. No, it it definitely is. And yeah, I agree to the extent where it's become kind of like the hallmark of what defines a successful relationship nowadays in the modern day, where in reality, the connection, like you mentioned, is the really big fundamental foundational element of the relationship. If you take everything away, if you take all that passion away, is there anything of real substance there for you yeah. to even have with the other individual? So, yeah, I think a lot of media, the way media portrays it, the way we we buy into that idea and then we continue spreading that message through the portrayal of our own relationships because we bought, we bought into that idea. Yeah, I think, and I hope that this last year is particularly really helped in terms mm-hmm. of reshaping the way in which we view the yeah. view relationships and in, in a much deeper fonder way like you're yeah. mentioning i also think that it is actually the reason why we as humans want romantic relationships i think we want that connection we want that mm-hmm. deep deep feeling of like okay we belong together and we we love each other and and we just we just know each other completely like to the core and we still we want to be together 
And yeah, that, that actually works against passion. That's the problem. Mm. Because you, because when do you have passion when you don't know someone really well and there's still a lot of insecurity and you're not sure, Oh, do they love me back? And it, it really sparks that passion and that like longing for this other person. And then of course there's the biological aspect of like, okay, um, this is a new person and I want to, um, reproduce with them because my biologic biology wants me to spread my, my genes. Right. That that's the, that's what passion and, and that's what this attraction and passion is, but that's not why we really, really want that relationship on the long run, I think. And yeah, so that to me is definitely the most underrated relationship <laughs> quality <laughs> in yeah. romantic relationships. I, I don't really know about friendships <laughs> relationships right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I would agree. I I'd agree from a romantic relationship standpoint. And so the third and final question is: What's your own mantra or slogan when it comes to relationships, or even just life at large in general? I also love that you said life at large in general because I want to say my mantra is always self responsibility, responsibility for my thoughts, for my feelings, for how I behave. Um, I believe that. I'm not responsible for anyone's needs and happiness and the other way around. They're not responsible for mine. Um, if I want it, if I do something for someone, I will do it because I want to, and because I love them or like them and not because it's my job to do that for them. And the same goes for the other person. And yeah, that really, to me is the most, it's like this, this standard that I try to live by. And when there's um, anything, for example, in my relationship with my husband, if there's a, a moment where I feel not good about something that he do does or the way that he behaves, I, before I even say anything to him, I will always look at myself first. I will always look at, okay, why am I upset about this? What's happening here? What are my thoughts? What gets, what's getting triggered? Is this actually something I want to address? Is this something I want him to know about? Not because I need him to change what he's doing, just is this something mm -hmm. that I want him to know about? Or does not does he actually not have to know about it at all? You know, and if I feel like I need to talk about it and I need to, I need to discuss it or something, then I will always address it from a place of, hey, um, I noticed you did this why did you do it? And not to like, oh, why did you do it? You, you, you're so horrible. You hurt me. No, to understand, to get to know him better, to understand mm. what's going on in his head and why does he do the things he, he does. And sometimes that alone will help me because then mm. I know, okay, probably what I made up, the story I made up in my head of what it means, what he did is usually not what the real reason was. And that's why the question why is so amazing. And I can tell him, hey, um, I would like you to do something else in this and this situation. But, th but even if he didn't do it, you know, this is the thing, like, it's not that he has to do it. And I think this is, this is what many people don't understand. It's like, you can, of course, tell your partner what you would like them to do. And you have to tell them because they don't know. But if you expect them to do it in order to be happy, and if you make them responsible for your, like, having a good life, then that's where the problem started. So that mm -hmm. is really the mantra that I try to live my life by this self responsibility. Okay, what Where's my, as where's my part in this before I do anything? Yeah, yeah. No, I love that because it then it's because people don't want to take the responsibility for the problems that are happening to them. But at the same time, it's when you do that for yourself, you at least from what I've seen and experienced, you get rid of the problems quicker. Yes, it is. It's true because you get, what do you get when you accept responsibility? It's not about blaming yourself and saying, oh, it's my own fault that I'm in this mm -hmm. mess. No, mm -hmm. it's about what did I do? How did I get here? Oh, I did this. That didn't work for me. That wasn't in my favor. So maybe I'm going to do something else. You know, it gives you power. It gives you the power right. over the situation. That's what it does. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, so I think like this entire episode in terms of like taking, taking your own power over your thoughts, your feelings, yeah. your, your sentiments, your behavioral impulse, behavioral reactions, rather, it helps eliminate so many other issues. It helps you concretely see what may be going on deeper yeah. down inside of you and really helps kind of elevate your own outlook on life. And, you yes. know, I think us as humans, like you mentioned, we, if you're, we're always looking for problems, but if you take the responsibility, you'll actually get rid of the problems yes. and you will then, I guess, 
like not attract problems. They will no longer be <laughs> you'll keep you'll repel problems away from you. So yeah, absolutely love it. And and so you know, for folks who are you know who really enjoy this episode and they want to learn more about you know how to get deeper down into their thoughts, their feelings, and you know learn about you know maybe they've had jealous experiences in the past or have had jealous partners or you know just insecurities and want to kind of elevate their relationships. Mm -hmm. How can they get connected with you to learn more about all of these different topics and also just get connected with you in general? Yeah, I would love to connect with all the people. <laughs> um, if you want to reach me, like you can see, find me on social media, on uh, Facebook or Instagram, um, the jealous, at The Jealous Coach, I'm both. Um, I'm also on Facebook I'm with my name, Martina Booth. So either way. Um, um, my website is thejealousycoach.com. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's the main channels that I would be that people could reach me at. I also I am on LinkedIn, my with my name, Martina Booth and the Jealousy Coach. I think you can find me under both names. So it should be you should find you should find me if you want to. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. And so like for for folks that are listening or viewing this podcast right now, I'll be linking those links down below, either in the show notes or description if you're watching this on YouTube. So Martina, I just want to thank you once again for coming on to the show and helping us learn more about how to untangle this weird concept of jealousy and insecurity when it comes to our romantic relationships. I know kind of we only scratched the surface, but we did really get down deep into some tangible, practical tips to help yeah. individuals really dig deep and help eradicate these jealous or these kind of negative emotions in their life to elevate their relationships and help enhance their relationships because at the end of the day that's what relationships are all about enhancing your life not taking away from your life and so i want to leave some time here also for you at the end to leave any other lasting messages parting messages for the listeners or viewers um one thing that i would like to say is because i know maybe some people will be thinking it like i'm not talking about relationships that are abusive in any way and you know i'm not talking about um partners who are basically don't don't care at all about you or your feelings and they're just all out and like dating around and like don't care about what you feel about uh, how you feel at all that's not what i'm talking about right um, i just want to make that clear i'm talking about the normal relationship where 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 it's like actually there's some people people love each other and they actually like each other and they try to to try to try to be nice to each other right that's what i'm talking about if you're in any type of abusive relationship before you start working on your thoughts and i mean you'd have to like work on your thoughts first to realize okay what is actually happening what is what am i making up here but if if that's the case then please don't start working on your jealousy but get out of there <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah that's that's something i i wanted to mention too yeah no yeah definitely if you're in an abusive relationship wholeheartedly agree with martina there like first get out of that relationship before you even start doing a lot of the inner work that we've yeah. discussed so um you know we hope that no one's in that type of situation no, this is that no one ever has to be in experiencing that type of situation so yeah definitely definitely a good call out there martina well awesome this has been a great great episode martina thanks so much for chatting today really really appreciate it Awesome. Thank you for, yeah, again, for inviting me. I, I had a lot of fun. This was a great conversation. Hey, everyone. My name is Shaman Raman, and thanks for tuning in to my YouTube channel today. I hope you found this episode of the Between Us podcast enjoyable and that you're walking away feeling entertained, inspired, and or motivated. If you particularly enjoyed this episode, please go ahead and smash the like button down below and leave your thoughts in the comments section. And if you'd like to go ahead and keep up with the podcast, go ahead and follow our social media. And please go ahead and subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell. So that way you can find out about new episodes as soon as they're released. Until next time, everyone, take care and we'll see you all in the next episode.